Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Art Lab at Home, where we try and do the art and science projects that we would normally do in the library from the comfort of my sewing room and your house using supplies that you hopefully already have at home. Uh, my name is Katie. I am the children's librarian at the Clarkston Library. You can normally find me there, uh, but during this time, I'm also stuck at home. And it's a really bad time to be stuck at home because it's spring break. No one wants to be stuck home here. You want to be traveling. You want to be out doing fun stuff. So this week, I thought that we would take a quick trip around the world, talk about some really cool architectural and engineering records, and uh, then see how you could recreate some of those experiments at home. So the first place that we're going today is Dubai. Um, it is one of the seven emirates that make up the United Arab Emirates, and it is home to the Burj Khalifa, which is the tallest building in the world. Uh, the Burj Khalifa is 2,717 feet tall. That's over half a mile in the air. Um, it is so tall that the sun sets at different times depending on which floor you are. Uh, so if you're on the ground, the sun is going to set at least three to four minutes before um, it would set if you were looking out from the 150th or the 160th story, um, which I think is very cool. The Burj Khalifa opened in 2010, and that's when it claimed the title of the world's tallest building. Um, and to make our own tallest building, I have a challenge for you. So the first thing that you are going to need are 10 pieces of spaghetti. I counted them out. Um, and if you don't have spaghetti, any like tall pasta, linguine, angel hair, bucatini, any of those will work. We're using pasta because it's a really fun material to build with because it's kind of brittle and it can break and so you have to be extra careful. Um, you're also going to want a foot of yarn or string. Pick that up. Um, and one foot, 12 inches of masking tape. If you don't have masking tape, scotch tape will work just fine. Painter's tape will work. Um, I don't know if I would try this with duct tape. That's a little bit hard to use. And the last thing you're going to want are your scissors. Now for this challenge, oh, you're going to need a timer too. I used my cell phone. Um, the thing that you guys are going to want to do is take 15 minutes and build the tallest tower that you can build using only 10 pieces of spaghetti, 12 inches of string, and 12 inches of masking tape. Um, you can break the spaghetti in any way you want. You can cut up the string, you can cut up the tape. However you do it, the tower has to be tall, as tall as you can make it, and it has to stand on its own. So when the 15 minutes is up, you take your hands away and you see um, if it can stand by itself. Now, we're not gonna spend 15 minutes with you watching me build a tower because that's very boring. So I'm gonna try and do like a really quick one that won't be as tall, just to give you an idea. I like a triangle base. A triangle is a pretty strong shape. So I'm gonna take three pieces together as like a triangle and hope that it can stand by itself. And then I'm going to add one piece. Ooh, that's falling. See, I've already lost my, my challenge because it doesn't stand by on its own. Um, see, this is harder than you think it is. Again, we're not gonna spend a whole 15 minutes watching me do this, because again, boring. But I want you guys to try it. I just broke a piece of spaghetti. Um, and I want you to try it two ways. So this is a challenge that you can compete against yourself um, just to see how tall you can get it. If you have a sibling or a friend over or a parent or like you're hanging out with your cousins during quarantine, um, you can compete against people and see who can get the tallest tower. My tower is not looking so good, guys. Okay, I'm gonna put that down. I'm gonna let you guys be the engineers this time and we'll pretend like my tower was really tall and looked really beautiful, okay? So again, you can compete against your siblings or your cousins or whoever, your parents, your caregiver, whoever you're hanging out with during this quarantine. Um, you can compete against yourself. And what if you have multiple people, I want you to try it first by yourself, and then I want you guys to try it a second time and work together and see what teamwork can do and if that can help increase the size of your tower. Okay, so that is our project for the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world. Next, we're gonna come back to the US. We're gonna go to Louisiana, uh, to New Orleans, and we're gonna visit the Lake Pontchartrain um, Pont 
Causeway. Uh, and the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway is the longest bridge over water in the entire world. Um, it is 23.87 miles long, which means that there's a period like kind of in the middle of that bridge where you can't see land at all. You're just on a car on a bridge over water as far as you can see. Now the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway, it opened in 1956 and it was meant to connect New Orleans with its northern suburbs. New Orleans was expanding, there was lots of growth, but they kept running into trouble of this like gigantic lake that was right where they wanted to expand. And so to go around the lake would take so long, and so they just built a bridge straight over it. And the first bridge that they built, the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway, um, was a two-lane like highway over the lake, and it was so successful that in 1969 they opened a second Lake Pontchartrain Causeway right next to it. And so you, now you have two lanes going north and two lanes coming south. Um, and it is the longest bridge in the world, longest bridge over water in the world. And for from 1956 up until 2011, it was the longest bridge anywhere in the world. And then in 2011, the Jiaozhou Bay Bridge in China opened, and it was 26.68 miles long, which means it became the longest bridge in the world. Uh, but people in New Orleans and Louisiana and all around, people who care about bridges, uh, were pretty quick to point out that the Jiaozhou Bridge included like an undersea tunnel, and the length included parts of the bridge that were actually over land. So the Guinness Book of World Records, rather than have a big fight over what counts as a bridge, uh, created two categories for bridges in their world record book. So the Lake Punch Train Causeway continues to be the longest bridge continuous over water, and the Jiaozhou Bridge became just the longest bridge. Uh, the Jiaozhou Bridge was unseated in 2018 by another bridge in China that connects Hong Kong with Macau. Um, and that one's supposed to be really pretty to look. So what we're gonna do uh, to celebrate the longest bridge in the world is we're gonna try and make the longest chain that we can in the world. So for this one, you need one piece of paper, you need scissors, and you need either a glue stick or more tape. Either will work. And what you're gonna do is using just one sheet of paper, you're gonna cut it up into strips, and then you're gonna use those strips to make a paper chain. And I want you to make the longest paper chain that you can using just one piece of paper. Again, you can compete with yourself to see how long you can get it. You can compete with siblings or a caregiver, anyone else that you're quarantined with. And what you wanna do is figure out how to make that one sheet of paper stretch into a really, really long chain. Do you want really long strips of paper? Do you want really skinny ones, really fat ones? Um, are you gonna cut all of your strips at once or are you gonna cut and glue as you go? Again, this is one that you're gonna time yourself for 15 minutes to see how long of a chain from one piece of paper you can make in 15 minutes. And that is how we are celebrating the Lake Punch Train Bridge, the largest continuous bridge over water in the entire world. Um, and our last stop today on our like tour of cool engineering and architectural monuments is New York City. And we are going to visit the Statue of Liberty, which is the heaviest statue in the entire world. The Statue of Liberty is 27,156 tons. And that is a lot because a ton is 2,000 pounds. So the Statue of Liberty is 54,312,000 pounds. That's a lot. That's very heavy. I would not want that on top of me. Um, and what we are gonna do, the Statue of Liberty, sorry, real quick, opened in October of 1886. It was a gift from a French sculptor named uh, Bertoldi and he wanted to celebrate American independence from England. So he designed this really beautiful sculpture and then he got help from a man that you may have heard of, Gustave Eiffel, who uh, was the engineer and the constructor behind the Eiffel Tower in Paris to help him construct the Statue of Liberty. And it was constructed in Paris or in France and then shipped over to the US where it now stands in the New York Harbor. Um, when it opened in 1886, it was this kind of like dull brown color 
And now it's a bright green color um, that we all know so well because of a chemical process called oxidation. There's a copper patina, which means there's a really thin layer of copper on top of the statue. And over time, the copper reacts with the oxygen and air and it turns it that kind of green color, which I think is pretty neat. Um, in like 1906, they wanted to paint the sculpture and like get rid of that green color. And there was so much public outcry that they just left. So the thing that we're gonna do to celebrate the world's heaviest statue is we are gonna work on making a base for other heavy things. And we wanna figure out what our strongest shape is for a base. So for this, you're gonna need three pieces of paper. You're gonna need some tape and you're gonna need some books. I have several in my hand over here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna make three shapes out of your paper. One, you're gonna make a cylinder. Hey, everybody. Um, you can see I've just taped mine a couple times. Two, you're going to make a triangle. Um, again, taped. And third, you're going to make a square. So now we have three columns, a cylinder, a triangle, and a square. Um, and what I found the easiest way to make, the cylinder you can just roll the piece of paper up for the triangle and the square, I found it easiest when I was folding my paper to make a small lip at the top and then to fold from there. So for the square, I folded it in half from that lip and then into quarters again from that lip. And then when you're putting it together, you have this tiny little lip that will either go around the outside or you can put it on the inside that gives you a little something extra to tape to. Now what we're going to do is test these three structures for how strong they are. And we're going to do that by placing books on top of them. So for this one, um, cardstock is really good if you have it. Um, but if you don't, I'm just using printer paper and that seems to be fine. And whoop, I don't think I can put a book on there if they're this close together. So let me move this guy out a little bit and this guy out a little bit. And we'll add our last book to our triangle. It takes a little bit of work to balance really well over your shapes, but you just wanna kinda of get them in the center. And then what you're gonna do is continue to stack books on top and count how many books you get on each structure before they collapse. And uh, go ahead, whoop, I, uh, tilted the balance of that book on top of the triangle and it collapsed pretty quickly. So that might be a hint for you as to what is to come. Uh, go ahead and repeat the experiment a couple different times, making new structures, new forms each time, um, and record your results. See if they repeat, see if the same structure continues to be the strongest. Um, and that is what we are doing to celebrate the Statue of Liberty, the world's heaviest statue. Thank you guys so much for joining me for Art Lab today. Um, I hope that you have a wonderful spring break and that you're staying safe inside and that this little travel around part of the world was a good addition to your day. I will see you next time. Have a great day and goodbye.